देवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृचा नरम चेवा नरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथोजया वीर नष्टा प्रयश भाद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवय भागवतमश्लोक भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टि नम हों विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्तिवेदात स्वामी नितिनामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषून्यवादी पश्चिदेशिणे नाम महावदन्य कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाते कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नमने गौरत्षे नम पंचतत्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतारम भक्त नमा भक्तशक्ति का हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगीराधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्राणमा हरि प्रि जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निचानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाकार शिवास गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमः विष्णु पदय कृष्ण पृष्ठा बुद्ध श्रीमाते जय पता कृष्वामी ने नमो चर्य पादय निताय कृप प्रदाय न गौर कात दाम दाय नगर ग्राम हरे हरे कृष्ण देर दिवोटिस सो जो देवी कंटिन्यू नरसिंह कथ का सो I'm seeking your blessings to be able to say something inspirational for the pleasure of the Lord and his devotees. Thank you. This can start. <laughs> With your permission. It's so interesting how we came to worship uh Narasimha Dev. We are Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Our Ishta Dev is who? Yeah, Radha Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, why we worship Nrsimha Dev? <laughs> How it will get us to our goal? <laughs> to Krishna Prem, right? In Goloka Vrindavana. Technically speaking, Nrsimha Dev, that's the deity of Vaikuntha. That's the Lord of Vaikuntha. He has his own planet in Vaikuntha Loka, right? And it's Nrsimha Loka, we know this. So, how from worship of someone who is why kuntha not <laughs> we can uh, be promoted to goloka to someone who is prajantra uh, nandana krishna right that supreme uh, lord actually this secret opened by shila prabhupada to all of us he said that out of all avatars we have 10 we have more <laughs> actually unlimited uh, uh, number of avatars so at Out of all these avatars, three for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, uh, most important. That's Rama Avatar or Bhagavan Ramadev or Ramachandra and Krishna himself, the Supreme Personality of it, and Rishimha Bhagavan. Why Rama? Why we worship Rana? Because Rama gives us Mariada and Mariada is the basis. That's the bottom line that the foundation of our bhakti what is mariada that's dharma and uh, the simplest definition of dharma to do right thing in the right way that's dharma right and dharma the translation of dharma is something which holds 
what to hold by Dharma, what Dharma holds actually. This is our own existence, personal life, and the existence of all this universe. That's what Dharma upholds. So, as Srila Prabhupada told us, first be conscious, and the consciousness as formed by Dharma. That's our consciousness. If you do right think in the right way, that's our ground to step on. And then to become Krishna conscious, that means to be promoted to Sanatana Dharma. First Dharma and then to Sanatana Dharma, right? To play with the Lord, to be uh, in the relationship with the Lord, to serve the Lord, that's already Sanatana Dharma. That's our realm. He gives us Mariada, the foundation for our devotion. That's four wrecks, that's Mariada, right? We cannot be humans if we don't follow these four wrecks. That's our Mariada given by Lord Rama. And then Krishna, as Bhagavan himself, he comes here as Akira Samrita Murti. He's a reserver of all the rasa. He is a perfect knower of our soul, of our nature, of our inclination, of our needs. And he is the first uh, psychologist, the perfect psychologist. He knows what to do, how to do, when to do, where to do. <laughs> all whatever connected to rasa, he knows perfectly. We may not know. We may just have some like uh, understanding of our real nature and we want something in this regard but Krishna knowing what we really are will give this relationship in such a way that it will be totally totally satisfying for us therefore he is giver of rasa there is a trinity Bhagavan, Bhakta and Bhakti and it's very difficult to break it it's impossible because they interdependent. Bhagavan depends on Bhakta, Bhakta depends on Bhakti, and Bhagavan depends on Bhakti. Everyone else depends on everything else in this triangle. So it's impossible to break because they are like this. <laughs> everything interdependent. So from inside you cannot break all the things. So, and Bhakti is it's something which is so attractive to the Lord. What is Bhakti? That's our devotion, how it will manifest. Through loving devotional service, right? And when the Lord reciprocates with it, it's already rasa. So loving relationship based on bhakti from one side, from our side, and uh, from uh, the loving reciprocation of the Lord from his side, it forms rasa. What is rasa? He's a giver of rasa. What is rasa? That's a uh, nice emotional, a very sublime exchange with the Lord, which are very sweet. The taste of rasa, taste of this relationship with the Lord, it's very sweet. Therefore, Krishna gives rasa, but Narasimha Dev, what's the role of Narasimha Dev? What's his mission? Narasimha Dev, he protects this rasa. So we have foundation of Mariada, then we have rasa to fill in the scene. The scene that's Mariada. Then we have rasa. And then somebody has to protect this rasa. <laughs> because so many internal and external impediments uh, of this rasa to grow, to be developed, uh, to be established. So Nrisimha Deva is there for this rasa to be developed fully. From the beginning to the end. Although there is no end uh, uh, in our path of bhakti, there is no end. But Nrisim Hadev is there from beginning to the end to develop, to elevate our relationship with the Lord more and more. And um, say, Samacharya says that Nrisim Hadev is the deity of Anartha Nivriti. He just removes our Anarthas, help us. We know that there are six Anarthas in the heart, six enemies in the heart, plus, of course, Adi. Nisibachar, Kutinati, Jivahimsana, Lava Puja, Pratishta. All of them, they are unwanted. They should be get rid of. So Nrisimha Dev helps to eradicate all of them uh, totally. But not just this, because he is here to promote us further, to Asakti, to Bhava and Prema. It's also very interesting uh, how um, um, how Bhaktivinoda Thakur prays to Lord Nrisimha Deva. Ajahn Nivas Prabhu mentioned yesterday, Navadvipa Bhavata Ranga by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that the meeting 
of Bhaktivinoda Kur and Rishim Hadeva and the loving exchange. It would be nice if we read it now. That's from Navadvipa Bhava Taranga or the ways of Bhava, or ways of pretty ways of love in Navadvip. It's very elevated uh, book by Bhaktivinoda Kur. He explained how he came to his real identity. Meeting, he is going through whole Navadvip, through all the nine islands of Navadvip, and meeting one by one different exalted personalities, and they give something, add something to his relationship to the road. Finally, on Antarvip, he meets Radha and Krishna in his identity as a manjari, so he, he was able to see. So one of these meetings is with Nrisimha Dev. So let's read about his exchange with Nrisimha Dev. It's so, so nice to hear. Southeast of there is Nrisimha Pali. When will I see the pure transcendental sweetness of this place, also called Deva Pali? Nrisimha Pali. That's the end of Godrama. I will roll on the ground in ecstatic love while visiting this residence of Lord Nrisimha, sincerely begging for his grace. Without a trace of duplicity in my heart, I will attain Krishna Prema. That's how we should beg to Nrisimha Dev, <laughs> without any duplicity in the heart, very sincerely. What is the sincerity? Sincerity means to go to the end, to reach to our goal, that's sincerity. The hankering, it should be, we should hanker for it, so that's sincerity. To go to the end, to go to our prayogenes, that's our sincerity. No matter what around, no matter of all our circumstances. And then he continued, within my sinful heart, the six enemies headed by lust perpetually reside. As well as duplicity, desire for fame, plus sheer cunning. That's all this anarchy which we mentioned. Alas, greed, uh, puja, pratishta. At the lotus feet of Lord Nrisimha, I hope that he will mercifully purify my heart and give me the desire to serve Lord Krishna. That's our prayer to Nrisimha, they purify my heart and give me the, the desire to serve Radha Krishna, because everything in our spiritual life starts from the desire. If the desire is not there, it's not even in the window, it's not in the picture, so how we can get there? So desire should be there, it should be established, should be firm, so we can ask Nrisim Hadev, we can pray to Nrisim Hadev, please give me this desire uh, to get this pure love of Radha and Krishna. And then, he prays more. Weeping, I beg at the lotus feet of Lord Nisimha Deva for the benediction of worshipping Radha and Krishna in Navadvip. <laughs> That's also special benediction required from Nisimha Dev. He's in the mood of Lord Chaitanya here. All the deities here are in the mood of Lord Chaitanya. So he happily gives what we ask him, especially um, this benediction of worshipping Radha and Krishna. Perfectly safe and free from all difficulties. That's the second point. First, purify my heart. Give me the desire to serve and then eradicate all the difficulties on, on my past. This, right. Uh, then will this Lord Hari, whose terrible form strikes fear into fear itself, even become pleased and show me his mercy. And what is this mercy? Dear child, when I meet him, and he will say to me, dear child, sit down freely and live happily here. And she Gaurangadam, may you nicely worship the divine couple and may you develop loving attachment for their holy names. That's the blessings we can get from the Rishim <laughs> See, develop loving attachment for the holy name. So that we'll be nicely serving Arada and Madma. By the mercy of my devotees, all obstacles are cast far away. With a purified heart, just perform the worship of Radha and Krishna. For such worship overflows with sweet nectar. So that's very nectarian. And Rishimha Deva gives this nectar to us. Nectar of worshiping Radha and Krishna uh, to the extent of getting pure love of, of them. Saying this, will that Lord diligently place his own divine lotus feet upon my head? <laughs> <That's> supreme blessings. <laughs> 
to put his divine lotus feet upon my head. Suddenly, I have an experience after this, sublime love for the divine couple Radha and Krishna. That's how Narasimha Dev gives us sublime love by giving all this benediction and finally putting our lotus feet on his head. Actually, we are getting every day this lotus feet on his head. So that's his benediction of pure love. Why he is doing this? To give the pure love. That's a sign. His lotus feet on our head means uh, the getting of uh, pure love of God. S suddenly, I will experience a sublime, a sublime love for the divine couple Radha and Krishna and undergo the ecstatic transformations called sattvika. Fallen on the ground, I will roll in the dust by the door of Shin Risimha temple. So thus, we see that not just Narasimha Deva removes all the obstacles from the path of our bhakti and also he promotes up to prema. He gives directly uh, this gift of Krishna prema. And even more, we know that about prema there are six more layers. Like, uh, and Narasimha Deva accompany us from level to the level, to the next level, to the next level, through all the path of bhakti. It's a very, very special feature of him. He's a protector of our you know, uh, establishing of rasa in the relationship with the Lord. When the Lord Chaitanya came to Puri, he wanted uh, to be thoroughly submerged into the Radha Bhava, the emotions of Rafa. That's what he came to experience here, right? He wanted this Radha Bhava, he wanted to understand the love of Radha Krishna, and he wanted to understand the nature of this love. So, but he was reading, he was hearing uh, from uh, uh, Gadadhar Pandit about Dhruva and about Prahlad. What does it uh, have to do with uh, Radha Bhava? How Dhruva and Prahlad can help to get Radha Bhava to Lord Chaitanya? It's not something esoteric, it's not something you know, very high, sublime. Uh, in the terms of the relationship with the Lord, right? The Dhruva and Prahlad, we know the story. So how the story of Prahlad Maharaj could help Lord Chaitanya to get what he wanted, <laughs> that the goal, to reach to the goal of his mission, uh, to enjoy Radha Bhava. Actually, Shimati Radharan, the secret here, that, um, that Prahlad, the qualities of love of Prahlad, he was so determined he, despite of any obstacle, he was so concentrated on the Lord. That what Radha always wants. That what Lord Chaitanya always wants. And this helped Lord Chaitanya to rise uh, his relationship uh, with uh, uh, the Lord through Radha Bhava. Like meditating on how Prahlad, despite of any obstacle, was ready to be with the Lord was concentrated on the Lord. That's the main thing, because uh, he's an epitome, he's an example, perfect example of the devotee who get to perfection in devotional light by which method of devotional service? Remembrance, right? So that's our uh, prahlad. Like this, so even uh, beyond prema, if you are going beyond, say, we will. Finally, in the spiritual world it will happen. So even then, Rishima Deva helps us in this. All this Leela, the essence of this Leela, this love and reciprocation between Lord Rishima Dev and uh, uh, Prahlada Maharaj. So we can pray uh, to Rishima Deva, that's another prayer uh, by the resident of Harivarsha. Harivarsha, that's also earthly abode of um, Prahlada Maharaj. We know that Prahlada Maharaj is in the spiritual world in Rishimha Dev. Uh, they are there on Rishimha Loka, but also he eternally lives on Jambudvipa. And uh, there are nine tracts of land uh, there on Jambudvipa. And one is this Hari Varsha. We are Southwest one. We are Bharata Varsha. And then we have Kimpurusha Varsha. And then we have Hari Varsha. So that Hari Varsha, that's a boat of Rishimha Deva where all the residents of Hari Varsha praying to Nisimha Dev, worshipping, uh, headed by um, Prahlada Maharaj. So what are they praying for? 
let's hear yeah. because it's also very essential. <clears throat> O oh my Lord, who possess nails and teeth like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desire for fruitive activity in this material world. That's the first prayer. Hiranika Shippu starts from small Hiranika. Gross Hiranika Shippu starts from subtle. And this subtle Hiranika Shippu that's not outwardly manifest, it's inside. It inwardly is there. It, uh, there as our demon-like desire. So everything which then appears externally as a ferocious feature of Ugra karma, ferocious feature of um, Vikarma, like um, very ferocious activity meant to destroy the whole world, it starts from within. And it's within our hearts, small Hiranyakashipu, subtle. <laughs> we then grow, if it's not checked, then grow uh, to external manifestation as the uh, vikarma activity meant to destroy the whole world. This is our demon-like desire. Why is demon-like? It's explained here because it's desire for fruitive activity. Everything starts from this small desire to enjoy separately from the Lord. It's whatever it can be. Even smallest desire to enjoy separately from the Lord. When the enjoyment of Krishna, not in the picture. If I do something uh, without having this in the mind, without the intention to please the Lord with what I do for my personal sense gratification, that's demon like to say, everything started from that. And then it comes out as this ferocious Hiranyaka Shapu, whom Jasim uh, Hadev tore apart. So everything starts from, let's not do to that limit. Let's not to go to that limit when it's already appeared manifested externally. Let's receive Hadeva, deal with it in my heart. So I'm inviting him. Please appear in my heart. That's the second portion of this wonderful prayers. And actually that's how we should pray to receive Hadeva. Appear in my heart and then what to do in this heart, in my heart, drive away our ignorance. Because Whatever bad I have, all this material desires, they come in from my ignorance. If ignorance is not there, material desires are not there. It's, everything starts from a video I forgot. Ignorance means, literally speaking, the root cause of ignorance. Our forgetfulness about our constitutional position. I'm a servant. Then I accept new identities. It's called Asmita. I'm a master. If I'm not a servant anymore, then I became automatically master of what? Of this body. I identify myself with this body and that I want to enjoy. And through this body, right? Thus, this asmita grows into raga and vesha. Raga is its attachment to what is pleasurable for this body and vesha, hatred of what, what's not pleasurable, right? This is uh, it's two more layers of ignorance, and then I fear the sasmita. What if I die? I cannot imagine dying. Nobody in this world uh, can imagine they will die. <laughs> but finally, what if I die? And all these pleasures gotten through the body will finish, will end. So I fear this death. And the fear of death even more ferocious than the death itself. Why? Because for whole life I just fear of death. It's not temporary something. Fear of death is the basic of all other fears. Whatever we can fear in the life comes from uh, this fear of death. We can fear what? We can fear calamities. We can feel, uh, fear a social environment. We can feel whatever. <laughs> Small... Uh, Tension which we have, or lack of uh, relationship which we hanker for, so many things, right? That's our fear, but all of them sprouts from fear of death, finally, right? Uh, and this, when you remove this ignorance, then we may become fearless. That's the last portion of it. So first, I ask Nrisimha Deva, following the residence of uh, Hari Varsha, please kindly vanquish demon-like desire in the heart. 
then please, for this, enter into the hearth. Like, how to operate there if you are not there? Please enter and then remove the ignorance that the root cause of this material desires, right? And then, if it's not there, this ignorance, no more fear. And they can serve you um, nicely. So, demon like desires. Mm. It's interesting. Hiranya mm. Kashipu, that's embodiment of all our desires to the supreme extent. To that extent, we cannot even imagine what was this desire which was there in Hiranya Kashipu. He don't want to die. Uh, he wants to be immortal. He didn't want to have any competitors or rivals. He wants to control all the living entities. He um, wants... Um, yes. Yeah. And uh, to have all glories. Actually, that's totally spiritual desires. <laughs> and he wanted everything starts from, okay, I want mortality, how I can get it? By realizing myself as a spiritual soul. As a spiritual soul, I am eternal. So he wanted spiritual sin. Because all this desire, whatever is listed here, the spiritual desires, starting from uh, this immortality, he wanted to become immortal. What could be more ambitious? But he didn't set it in proper place, these goals. He set it in the matter how to become immortal in the matter. If by definition the matter is perishable, how can you be immortal there? It was first foolishness, like, because these demons, when strive for something, they cannot, they don't have Viveka. How to ask Brahma, who is himself perishable, how to ask immortality Brahma? Of course, Brahma said, after 100 celestial years of this stupid austerity, it was totally stupid, as Shiva Prabhupada, uh, said about this austerity. So he, wa he wanted from Brahma something that Brahma couldn't even give to him. And it took so much of endeavor. Like he was staying on one toy, one leg. Can it? We cannot imagine this. Like s straight, like looking upwards. Straight upwards. Not just this, not like this, but straight upwards. It is raised hands like this and like this in the uh, end hill. Finally, he ended <laughs> staying in the end hill. So what could be more? And he was meditating on the powers of Brahma because he wanted the position of Brahma, even the better position. And he was inspired by Brahma. Okay, Brahma got his uh, position by his austerity. When the Brahma was uh, ordered by the Lord Tapa, Tapa, Brahma started immediately to do this Tapa for 1,000 celestial years. But it was so uplifting. It was not, not dull posture uh, to get something, you know, unreal, some Akasha Pushpa to get immortality. It was very enlightening. It was elevating his consciousness so much that finally, because of this austerity, he was chanting the holy name. What was his austerity? He was chanting the holy name of the Lord for 1,000 years. That's how he got his power to create. And he was meditating on the Lord. But Hiranya Kashipu instead took shelter of Brahma, who is mortal. And he was asking something unreal from him, which Brahma couldn't. And uh, because of pride, because of hatred of Vishnu, he couldn't take shelter in the proper source of all these powers. That's Lord Vishnu. He couldn't do this. Therefore, everything failed. So all this uh, thing. So 100 celestial years he was staying like this. And uh, it's also interesting uh, how he got this benediction to conquer the whole universe. Uh, he got so much power. It mentioned in, in Mahabharata. Um, King Upamanyu mentioned it to Krishna, my dear Krishna, actually a part of these blessings from Brahma, which he got, he got also some boons from uh, Lord Mahadev. 
So he was doing another penance for Mahadev to please him. Finally, Mahadev being pleased, gave him this boon. Uh, you will be, there will be no rivals uh, for you in martial arts, in uh, uh, combat prowess. And third blessing involves uh, that uh, you will get all the powers, combined powers of all the demigods. Thus, with these blessings by Lord Shiva, he was able to conquer the whole universe. So much so that he was even shaking the Mount Meru. He was able to shake Mount Meru. You know Mount Meru, yeah? That's the pivot of this universe. That everything else just grounded on it. It's it, it just a support for the whole universe, for the whole Abu Mandala. He was able to shake even Mount Meru by the dint uh, of this power which he got. So finally he replaced all these demigods, he replaced by himself. So he became Indra, he became Vaya, he became Agni, he became Surya, he became Chandra, he became Varuna. Everywhere we have 33 crores of different demigods, so he became so powerful, he got all these powers. Of, uh, as a benediction from Lord Shiva and was able to replace them in the universal affairs by himself. So he exercised different functions of the different lords by himself. So he became Vaya, he became Surya, he became... So he was able to do this. And it's uh, another interesting point how Brahma said that uh, uh, in the future, there will be no such austerity anymore. There will be no such power gotten by this austerity as yours. So, uh, somehow he confirmed that was highest power which is possible to get from austerity in this material universe. Nobody can exceed you in this. Uh, why? Because, see, in this story, why it's so intense? We have three sources of spiritual energy. One is Bhagavan Rishimha Dev, another source, or um, rather we have Ashraya Vishaya, the um, one who gets the uh, receptor of this uh, internal energy, that's Prakhlad Maharaj, and one, another one that is fallen, uh, Parshada, that's uh, Hiranyaka Shapu. Why he was so powerful? Because before, and now, and eternally, he is Parshada. He is eternal servant. He is eternal associate of Lord in Vaikuntha planet. Therefore, he has this energy. Otherwise, without this energy, without uh, uh, being backed by this energy, he couldn't get all the things. It was just uh, impossible to get by material means. Mm. So, that was his... And he was also able to live 71 Divya Yugas. It's the duration of one Manvantara. It was uh, happening whole Lila in Satya Yuga, and it's uh, uh, 100,000 years, right, of uh, normal lifespan in Satya Yuga, earthly years. Uh, but he was able somehow to stay alive for 71 Divya Yuga. That's 330 millions of earthly years. That was the lifespan of Hiranyakashipu. But finally what? He had to die. He couldn't get anything by his austerity. He died anyway. He was killed by uh, Rishim Hadeva. Therefore, he didn't achieve anything. So thus, uh, Srila Prabhupada comes to this conclusion. It's not so easy to go to hell. It's not so easy. You have to endeavor so much to go there. And what is this hell? The breaking of these four principles. If you want illicit sex, you have to have all this uh, money and brothels for it, right? If you want intoxication, you have to have all the wine uh, fabrics to produce this. If you want uh, to eat meat, you have to have so many slaughterhouses you have to open. Uh, open them. If you want to gamble, then you have to have all these casinos and hotels and so much of uh, these different things. It's not easy. You have to endeavor like anything to get this. So to go to hell, 
It's not an easy thing. But it's so easy to go back home, back to God. It's, it's the easiest thing. It's most supply and most easy. Why? Because the Lord is so near to us. Whatever came on its own without our efforts, that's what we need. This is axiom. <laughs> Whatever came without effort, the Lord came without even, you know, our sanction. We didn't want it. He's here, right? there in the heart for us. <laughs> right. So what could be more sublime, more easy than to have the relationship with someone who is so close in the heart, with the Lord. Even our closest relatives, they're still outwardly there. It's outside our body, yeah? So still we have to endeavor so much to, you know, to be in the relationship with them, <laughs> to keep this relationship, to strengthen this relationship. That's again whole thing. But here, it's the closest friends in the heart. And um, I like these uh, prayers by Prahlada Maharaja. He speaks to his, uh, his schoolmates. Koti prayasa sura balaka herer. So where is the prayasa? Prayasa means extra endeavor to get something. So where is the prayasa in our relationship with the Lord? Who is there in our heart sitting? All my friends, souls, sons of the Asuras, the Supreme Personality of God, in his super soul feature always exists within the cores of the heart of all living entities. He is there, he is so close that the relate to establish the relationship with something which is so close, it's most easy thing. Right? If it's far, then you have to strive for it, you have to go there, you have to do something for it. But here the Lord is in the heart. So what could be more easy than to establish a relation with someone who is so close to you? That's the point he is making here. And this is so natural to be in this relationship. Um, all other things, they are not natural here. To strive for illicit sex, gambling, uh, meat eating, intoxication, so n unnatural for the soul. Because it takes so much in there, it's so stressful. And immediately gives side effect. If still, this in the picture, it gives side effect immediately. It just hit you, it just struck you on the head. Immediately with something. <laughs> no doubt in it. Everyone has this experience in life, right? But here, this relationship, they're so pleasant, they're so wonderful, they're so nectarian. And um, Prahlada Maharaj continues, He is well-wisher and friend of all living entities, and there is no difficulty in worshipping the Lord. Why then should people not engage in his devotional service? So it's a profound question. Why? Because they have their senses. Gadanta, ad, um, Adanta Kupir Vishatam Tamisram. All the senses are not controlled. They cannot control their senses. So the senses, that's the engine. They drag them down. They make them slide down to hell. They can matir na Krishna Paratasvatava. That, this uh, verse which was recited yesterday by John Nivas Prabhu, so it's there. Matir na Krishna. We cannot understand Krishna if this Adanta Gopir is there. Uh, when they're dragging us to hell, we cannot turn our face to Krishna. It's just impossible. So that's the main reason. So first we have to start <laughs> with our demon-like desire, which possesses uh, our senses. And. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes amazing purport to this verse uh, by Prahlada Maharaja to his schoolmates. He is saying, as confirmed in Vedas, Sayuja Sakkaya, actually this exact quote from the Vedas, Dva Suparna Sayuja Sakkaya. Two Sakkas are there, Suparna, the birds of fine feathers. It's so beautiful. The soul and super soul. The extremely super is very beautiful birds <laughs> of fine feather. Very beautiful. So they, they are sitting as a sucker so much in such a closeness that they sayuja, sakaya, they merge into each other. But this merge is not that merge um, uh, which uh, um, 
men or which worship by um, Maya bodies. That's not that marriage. It means they're so close. They're friends. They almost together. They almost merge in each other. <laughs> they suck us. They're so close. And uh, then he continue. The Lord has merged in his friend. That the Lord as our friend, he is always situated next to us. He's within us. We are so close to each other that this closing described here as merging into each other. And then he continue. The Lord is so friendly to the living entity that he remains within the heart. Why? He's not obliged. We just left him. So he could just, you know, say bye-bye. But he's sitting there, listen the reason, so that one can always contact him without difficulty. That's the main reason. Whenever you want me, I am here for you. <laughs> you just turn your face towards me. I am here, you are Saka. You are beautiful and me are beautiful. We are all, but just face me. Just see, then notice my existence. I am here for you. <laughs> So that's uh, how uh, we see this and how uh, Srila Prabhupada writes about this. It's beautiful prayers. And then we will glorify now Prahladam Maharaj. So it's so sublime devotee. The whole his existence, he was just concentrated on the Lord. That's the essence of his existence. He could not check himself in his thinking about the Lord. He was always concentrating on the uh, Lord. Whatever Hiranyaka Shippu wanted to achieve by the dint of his austerity, his material powers, it was easily achieved by Prahlad. That the same goal in life, eternal happiness, right? Prahlad has it and uh, Hiranyaka Shippu has it, right? Eternal happiness, immortality, and happiness personified. That should stay in front of me, in front of me, right? Eternal happiness. But how they come to it? What is the path? One is the best of total failure, of this austerity, of taking shelter in the demigods, forgetting all these powers, and then stupid request to the Lord. I should not be killed with this and this, not like this, not like this, like, you know, trying to escape the, the final truth about this existence, it's perishable. <laughs> you cannot get, you cannot get immortality here. And Prahlad was just going the opposite way. So there is only one way actually. One goes up, one vector is up and another down. Therefore, Krishna tells everyone goes my way, my path. So that's only one path, either up or down. So Kranika Shippu was sliding down. But Prahlad, for the same purpose, he was going up. What could be more relishable than just by serving of the Lord, attract uh, to the Lord? And how the Lord reciprocated? Let's us By devotional services, so we can get such a power. Actually, only matter can be transformed by spirit. Only by spirit, the matter can be transformed. Whatever Hiranyaka wanted to achieve, it was easily gotten by Prahlada Maharaj. He was using the power of bhakti, power of spiritual energy is such that it can control matter very easily. If bhakti is there, the matter will fall um, in a... Uh, how to call it? Will fall in, so everything else will follow. Um, if the bhakti is here. So Prahlada, as it's stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 7438, Prahlada Maharaj was always absorbing thoughts of Krishna, thus being always embraced by the Lord. See, that's a loving reciprocation. It's not from one side, the Lord immediately is there. He does his ten steps answering one hour. Therefore, it's so potent. It's not even our steps. Ten steps he makes, but it's his steps. They're huge. Immediately he embraced Prahlada. 
So that's being always embraced by the Lord. He didn't know how his bodily necessities such as sitting, walking, eating, lying down, drinking and talking were being automatically performed. That's the main thing, how Krishna arranging all our situation so that we just serve. If the service is there, the situation will be arranged, no matter what. The Krishna himself gives this promise in Bhagavad Gita. I preserve what you have and bring, literally, on my shoulders, I bring what you lack. That's his promise. And then uh, he promised even more. He admits this in front of his devotees in non-verbal dialects, uh, uh, which Acharyas see. They hear this non-verbal dialogue. So he says, I like my devotees so much. I put the fulfillment of all their needs on my shoulders and carries them as a young man carries his beloved lady on his shoulders. I put the fulfillment, literally speaking, all our needs, the fulfillment of our needs of beloved lady on the shoulder of our Lord. It's his beloved lady. It's so easy for him. It doesn't strain him. He feels so much happiness just being able to carry all the needs of his devotees on his shoulders. That's his promise. And uh, it's interesting that the Lord not just fulfill all our needs, okay, that's probably default. It's always there. From the side of the Lord, it's always there. He protects thoroughly. That's how it was in the case of Prakladama Maharaj. In Hari Bhakti Sudhadaya, there are different, very sweet details of all this Lila and Rishimadeva, Prakladama Prakhlada Maharaja, Alila are given, so I would like to share a little bit. This is a very advanced source, and uh, I feel very much inspired by all these sweet details of these Lilas. Then Hirani Kashipu tried to kill Prahlada for the first time. When he got angry to that limit, I want to kill him. Splashing his saliva, he gave the order, kill him, kill this rascal, and then won. It's described that then all these Asura demons with their spears, with their swords, uh, with their tridents, they threw on this little Prahlada Maharaj. What did boy do? He sat in Padmasana. You can imagine this. All these big, big men, all these demons, they threw on with all his, um, the weapon and Prakladna Maharaj, so, but he just sat in Padmasana and concentrated on the Lord. <laughs> Fully in his heart. And then, what was the result? Krishna himself came. It was not that uh, moment when Rishimadev appeared from the column, he jumped out of the column, he appeared for first time. It was not first time. In this Leela, actually, Narasimhadeva appeared many times. This is the first appearance. He appeared in front of everyone there, although nobody could see them. Prahlad could see, but he didn't even notice the Lord. He was so absorbed in the Lord inside that when the Lord came and appearing outwardly, he didn't mention him. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't notice even uh, the Lord. And uh, what did Lord do? He started touching all the body of Prahlada Maharaja with his hand. He touched his cheeks, he touched his forehead, he touched whole his body, he touched his head. For what? Thus he protected. And what was the next? All these demons, ferocious demons, attacked Prahlada Maharaj, but all of a sudden his body became more um, strong than even the thunderbolt. He became like a, a blow of many thunderbolts. Nothing can, uh, uh, can harm him. So all these uh, things uh, which the Lord uh, protected him with, they uh, make Prahlada invincible. So all these touches by the Lord. The Lord immediately uh, protected uh, the whole body of uh, Prahlada Maharaj. And uh, they got just the opposite effect. 
spears broke, swords broke, tridents bounced off him. Moreover, these swords suddenly having uh, bounced off Prahlada Maharaj, they strike those demons who send all these weapons. They strike back. They hit demons um, instead. So soon there was a whole battle. The little boy didn't even notice it. It just came on its own without him even uh, you know, doing something about it. He was sitting there very peacefully, um, uh, very calmly, just meditating, just concentrating on the Lord. So Lord did the whole thing. He made his body so strong as a blow thunderbolt, the first thing. Okay, the stupid demons, they couldn't do anything. Hirani Kashipu, um, I had a plan. Okay, let's come to the phase two of my plan. So he called serpents, scary snakes. Uh, because Hirani Kashipu possessed a mantra uh, to control all the snakes, so he could do it. So he called the snakes, and they were scary. Creepy pythons, cobras, poisonous snakes. All of them, they, the same enthusiasm as before uh, all these men, uh, they threw on Prahlada Maharaja. They actually um, um, they crawled in from all the sides and started biting Prahlada Maharaja. He was just coiled with all the snakes. He was in the snakes, in the pile of the snakes. But what happened? The Lord in the heart just manifested. Kalia Lila in his heart. All of a sudden, Prahlada Maharaj remembered Kalia. And little Krishna, who was dancing on the hooks of the Kalia, jumping from one head to another. So whole Lila appeared in the heart by the mercy of the Lord. And the nectar of this Lila filled in the body of Prahlada Maharaj and neutralized the poison of these venomous snakes. So Prahlada Maharaja was not hurt even by poison of all the snakes. Why? Because of this nectar of this meditation. The nectar, as a result of meditation, what is this nectar? The Svarupa Shakti of the Lord. The Svarupa Shakti just fill in the whole body of Prahlada Maharaja, so nothing could affect him. It was so tremendous and so great lesson from all his lila. I will probably should stop now few more minutes for us so many lessons <laughs> like first when we concentrate on the Lord when we think about the Lord when we do Shravan and Kirtana Vishnu Smarana and all the Navanga Bhakti the Lord always fulfills our needs to the extent we don't even think about all right to such extent that we couldn't even imagine and he always protects us. Any circumstances, any material situations can be resolved, can be dealt with through the devotional service. If we concentrate on the Lord in any of our material circumstances, it will solve our problems. <laughs> That's how Brahlat uh, was acting as a servant of uh, um, Andrisimba Dev. So, I think I have to stop here. Any comments or questions? Or and Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhu wanted me to say, yes, today is the appearance day of um, our uh, divine... Oh, okay, disappearance day of Jayananda Prabhu, yes. He's the first saint in his you know, yeah. This title was given to him by uh, Prabhupada himself, first saint of Iskand. And he was a person behind all the Radhayatras. He was building all the Radhas. And through him, actually, our Guru Maharaj also came to Krishna consciousness. He was the first person to open all the uh, miracles of devotional service to our Guru Maharaj. And through him, Guru Maharaj got the taste for this unalloyed devotional service. It was in the heart. Why he is a saint? Because and what devotion was there? So much so that Srila Prabhupada could see that he is a part behind all these festivals. And uh, later on, Prabhupada asked, actually ordered uh, all the Radhayatras 
uh, to be held in such a way as to put the picture of Jayananda Prabhu on the Radhas next to Jagannath. So that's the uh, supreme mercy. And we have Smriti Samadhi uh, of Jayananda Prabhu in uh, <coughs> uh, Jagannath Mandir. It's wonderful because there are some, you know, some kurta, some sweater is there in which he was building this wonderful uh, Radhas for the pleasure of the Lord. So it makes us immediately remember his exalted qualities. And there is a book, I think, uh, by one of his brothers, uh, which describe uh, his colonies. <laughs> like this, if someone wants to add something to it, probably from God brothers of Jananda Prabhu, we will be happy to hear. So we have to, yeah, we have to remember the exalted personalities and glorify them. Because the Lord is pleased much more when we glorify His devotees than uh, when we glorify Himself. Yes, Prima. Jayananda was a, a per, he had a good balance of um, devotional service like actually working really hard for Krishna. Balanced of devotional service and working hard for Krishna. And at the same time he was very much absorbed. He loved the morning program and it, he would always finish his rounds before he went to sleep. So he, he had, you know, sometimes devotees are very, very good Brahmins and, and very good with um, a lot of sadhana. But then they don't get a lot of work done and then giant and then some people like work really hard but they don't have a, a again it balances yeah this that yeah giant another has somehow had both of those both sides are there i used to spend all day with him in new york and one thing i could say is that we don't really know how great devotees are sometimes like I knew he was a nice devotee, but I didn't realize exactly how, uh, how you know, I had no idea that he was going to become, that you know, 40 years later that we would be celebrating his, his disappearance day, and that that's something that we, we're around devotees all the time, we, we, we don't necessarily know exactly how great they are, we take them for granted. But he was, um, because he was very humble, and he never put himself as a, as, as a great person. He, he always um, just humbly, he just did this, uh, like you said, he did the Rathi Yatra festivals. He was also the Bhakti leader on the Radhamadar party for, 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 for some time. And... He would train new devotees and going out and take them out on book distribution. It was really hard for him because he was a carpenter, but he would push aside whatever you know his his what what, what he did naturally, and would go out on Sankirtan to train the new man. And he was um, certified by Sri Prabhupada as having gone back to Godhead because Sri Prabhupada. Uh, wrote a letter, and this was quite unusual. In fact, I don't think, I can never think of any time with anybody else that Srila Prabhupada ever wrote a letter to somebody who's already left their body. Oh, you know, Prabhupada would write letters to people who were alive. But in Jayananda's case, Prabhupada wrote a letter that was for everybody to read, but Jayananda had already gone back to Godhead. In the letter, Srila Prabhupada said that you attained the pure love of Krishna and went back to the spiritual world in this lifetime. So nice. Thank you, Prabhu. So anything else? Yes, Prabhuji.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Nanda Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai. Uh, this term, uh, Jai Nanda was the Iskon's first saint. It's not really applicable. It's not really proper for Jai Nanda. <coughs> Because the uh, even the jnanis and my bodies, they become saints. If you transcend the modes of material nature, it means you're a saint. So that's achieved by the by the uh, jnanis and the yogis. So Jayananda was actually a bhakta. We, 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 shouldn't, we shouldn't say he was a saint. It's not. Uh, <coughs> but the devotee has a much more, uh, a much be better position of, of being a devotee than the <coughs> Mayavad. But he was a, uh, he was Jagannath's a bhakti, he was Prabhupada's a bhakti, but <coughs> he was known as the uh, Mr. Atiyatra. So he was above even the, uh, just the uh, realization of Brahman. Even. He was actually, uh, uh, yeah, a devotee. Uh, yeah. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you so much, 